Treasury yields see big declines this week. In fact, it's been the largest week over week decline since December of 2014. So you got to go way back. Last time we saw yields tumble this much uh, in a one week period. And right now we're kind of waiting for that next bit of news. Is it going to be trade? Is it going to be Fed involved? Obviously, the move began ahead of the Fed movement. We've seen yields continually decline, really going back to November of 2018. But things really accelerated after March FOMC and that we've seen yields remain stubbornly low for quite some time. This is just the next move in that nah, in that trend. And if you look at where we kind of got to, we got to that level we talked about a few weeks ago in that 185 level, which was the level we, we took off back in November of 2016 when the president was elected and yields skyrocketed following his election. Uh, and I think at this point, uh, this could become a new home base for the market, at least until we get more clarity from the Fed, more clarity from the president and trade, more clarity from the economic data, which is coming in at some points are a little stronger than others. Some points are a little weaker. So it's kind of a tug of war. And there's a lot of what ifs that are ranging out there. But right now, Treasury is telling you one thing and that there is some risk out there. Despite the fact that we're seeing a sell off in equities, they remain very strong, despite the fact that we've seen gold up and down, up and down at the end of the week higher and Treasuries are no different. Treasury seeing a big bid into the weekend and likely will hold that bid at least until there's a reason not to. And right now we don't see that reason on the radar. And if you look at market volatility, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's one of the rare times we've seen market volatility elevated in the Treasury space as we broke out of the range post Fed. It seemed that things were, were going to maybe get calm. Volatility was going to get suppressed as the market was probably going to dance inside of a range, but that didn't happen. We saw the market break out and volatility broke out with it. So volatility, while it's not on the year to date highs, much higher than it was a week ago, certainly higher since the Fed. And since we saw that announcement from uh, the president on tariffs on China, all that has added to uh, a breakout of the range in the underlying. And that caused a breakout in the range, a breakout in volatility as well. So volatility higher heading into the weekend uh, as the market breaks out. And lastly, what do we have ahead? Well, I think at this point, it's been really a talk of, of Fed policy and how that has really dictated trade, whether it be higher stocks, whether uh, the risk uh, of the economy seeing higher, higher bond prices, lower yields. But at this point, it becomes very, very clear is that trade becomes a real thorn in the side of the Fed because trade is really what's dictating manufacturing. Trade is going to dictate, uh, you know, a lot of the factory orders, a lot of what's going on that the underneath the foundation of our economy. And the Fed is going to have to watch trade a, a lot closer, I think, than it had indicated uh, at the press conference on Wednesday and likely will continue to go forward because if trade doesn't go through, if we start to see hiccups in the system there between China, the EU or whoever it is, it's going to affect manufacturing deals here. It's going to affect output here. And that is going to cause the Fed to maybe have to act more aggressively based on outside circumstance, extenuating circumstances that they maybe haven't had to look at as closely before. So if trade will become the center point focus, I think, of where the bond market makes its next big move. The Fed certainly will be right there, but they will be more in a reactionary uh, uh, position than in a uh, than maybe more in the cause, which we've I think believed all along is that the Fed's been causing this market movement not only in equities but in bonds. I think that maybe the economy and trade has been causing the the movement in bonds, and the stock market obviously just loves lower rates, and the Fed gave that to them. So at this point, the trend will continue. Yields may find a home near this uh, between 180 and 190 uh, 10 year note yield, but I don't think you should get too comfortable here because if trade deals do go through and they are and they are positive, yields will creep back higher towards. 2%. Likewise, if we don't, they will continue to go down. And at this point, uh, I think it's very much a 50-50 uh, balance between the, the, two, uh, the two choices that we have. And if we look ahead down the, down the calendar, we've got another Fed meeting in September. That will be a very telling moment for Jerome Powell and the Fed, as they may need to be cutting rates again after just this week telling us, don't get used to lower rates.